Cadet Ditching, please lead the class and our guests in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Macomb Police Academy's Class 110 graduation ceremony. And good morning, class. Good morning, sir. As always, I hope you had a good evening, and I hope you're doing well. It's a tremendous occasion because you're graduating from the Police Academy, and it's also a tremendous occasion because we can have our graduation here in the Performing Arts Center. Our last two graduations have been in the classroom, and we've live streamed them at best. But today, it's great. It's great to have you here, and we want to thank you. 124 days of Police Academy, arriving before 6.30 each morning and not leaving until after 4.30 most days, standing at attention and being inspected every morning, marching everywhere, over 770 hours of training, 60 hours training in law, over 100 hours in firearms, and over 70 hours in subject control. And those hours in training weren't just on how to shoot a gun or on how to uh, apply subject control. You had to learn about how to make those decisions and de-escalation techniques. And then we took all that and we gave you 40 more hours on how to apply it. And then untold hours of homework. In the beginning, you wondered, was it ever going to end? And it did. And we're here today. Your families, your friends, you should all be proud of the cadets. Many of you in the room have already gone through an academy and you remember this day. So congratulations again. Let me be the first to say you did it. So without delay, let's get the program started. Pastor Friedman, will you step up to the podium for the invocation? One day we won't have to wear these. <laughs> Class of 110, it's been my honor to serve over the last 17 weeks as your chaplain, as well as one of your instructors. And once again, as everybody that has spoken so far has said, congratulations to you. I would ask everyone if you'll just bow your heads for a few moments as we pray. Dear Lord, we come before your presence on this beautiful, wonderful day that you have blessed us with, this day of honor and ceremony. We are here today because of the fine young men and women that are sitting here before us who have sacrificed and dedicated their life for the last 17 weeks for the cause of the law enforcement family. We thank you for them and for them hearing the call of law enforcement, as you said in your Beatitudes, the Ministry of Law Enforcement or Peacekeepers. We're grateful for all the, the instructors and the administration, the college, wonderful college here, who has had those to come to empty themselves into these young men and women, those filled with knowledge and experience and understanding of this field and how to apply the tactics and strategies of law enforcement. We're grateful, Lord, for each one of these individuals that are here who not only achieve the ability to sit through the academy but pass. We're grateful for their families who sacrificed their time with them and made it easy for them to sacrifice themselves in order to achieve what they are achieving right here today. We're grateful for law enforcement in general across our nation and we say thank you. We pray for those that are in already placed, already have a department to go to where their careers will begin and we pray that they have a long and uh, illustrious career in this field. We pray for those that are yet still searching that they will find favor with the department of their choosing and to be able to have the ability to begin their career. We ask throughout their career that they be safe, not just physically, but also emotionally and mentally. We ask that their families understand that each day that they step out of the home, be it in the morning, afternoon, or in the evening, and they put this uniform on and all of the tools that come with it, that they know that you are with them, that you are protecting them and that you are watching them. We pray, Lord, for law enforcement in general across our nation. We pray that our understanding from the statewide and citizenry will understand the important role that law enforcement plays. 
and what life would be in this country without these brave men and women. We say thank you, God bless America, and God bless law enforcement everywhere. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. I'd like to acknowledge our guests. First, I'd like to wish President Sawyer could be here, but he truly could not, and there were truly circumstances beyond his control today that he could not be here. But we know that he would love to be here, and he is always here. Provost Donald Ritzenheim, Trustee Joan Flynn, our Dean of Health and Public Services, Nareen Mirjanian, our Director of the Public Service Institute, Michael Lopez. Our M. Coles representative, Darnell Blackburn. Our keynote speaker, Roseville Police Department's Chief Ryan Monroe. And Macomb Community College's Police Department, Lieutenant Carney, who's representing Chief Matheny. And off to the far left is Mr. Greg Scott, who will be uh, assisting on stage. Let me introduce our Academy staff. Of course, uh, a quarter, um, Academy Coordinator, Mr. Scott, and Academy Coordinator, Mr. Powell. In the audience is our Administrative Staff Member, Rachel Van Zutphen, and our Chief Range Officer and Lead Firearms Instructor, Tom Ostrowski. I want to acknowledge those who aren't here, but they really do their part to make sure the Academy runs smooth, and that when you walk in that building, you know everything is comfortable. Uh, that's June Nixon. She's our, mate, um, our custodial staff member. She does an amazing job and Brian Genuine, he is always helping us out. And I want to thank everybody else uh, from Macomb who makes that, makes that uh, building run. Uh, it's a great facility, and we certainly couldn't do it without them. And then finally, all of our academy instructional staff. Uh, they make our academy great, and we appreciate it. So I want to say thank you. I would like to recognize National Police Week this week, and just to have a brief moment of silence for those law enforcement and criminal justice professionals who have given their life to serve our community. If we could just have a moment. Thank you. I'd like to welcome to the podium Dean Mirajanian, who will provide our opening remarks. Thank you, Mike. Good morning. Good morning. Wow, you're the best. I have done this a couple of times this week. Nobody was this enthusiastic. Thank you. And on behalf of Macomb Community College President, Dr. Sawyer, our Vice President for the Learning Unit and Provost, Dr. Ritzenhein, our Board of Trustees, I would like to welcome you to the graduation of our students from our Police Academy 110 in a year of 2021. Dear guests, it is with pride that I share with you that these graduates will become police officers in Macomb County and surrounding communities. So graduates, congratulations. You have completed transformation from being a citizen to a law enforcement officer. You have passed all the hiring segments survived the physical and mental training of this academy, sacrificed a lot over the past 16, 18 weeks, and successfully have arrived in this moment in time. You have achieved your goal. You are entering a profession of law enforcement. I want to thank each and every one of you for your service and for the sacrifices that you will make as you answer the call of duty. This is a path that requires courage. Courage, humility, and commitment to excellence. As you start your duty, remember that courage is a trait that many will speak of, but not many possess. As quoted by Winston Churchill, courage is rightly esteemed the first human qualities because it is the quality which guarantees all others. You have courage. You have chosen noble profession, 
in your life. Graduates, as you serve, you will be learning new skills that will be keeping you and our communities safe. Remember that your education does not end here, and you should take this opportunity to increase your knowledge and skills while on the job. It takes a special person to show courage when needed, but it takes a smart person to use it effectively. Your education here at Macomb Community College and on your job will help you in making you that smart person that will keep our community safe. Accomplishments, small or large, are possible because of the people that support, guide, and care for you. Graduates, please stand. Cadets, stand. And face the audience, please. Take this moment to acknowledge those key individuals that have helped you achieve this milestone in your life. Thank you to your families and friends for the support, motivation, and patience. With their support, you graduates made it through the academy. They were there with you before you started the academy and will continue to be with you in your work as an officer. Remember, when you are on a duty, they will be the ones that will be at home concerned about you. Never let your job as a police officer become all-consuming and make sure to find time for your family and friends. Thank you, families, for your support. Cadets, please face the stage. Graduates, your achievements today is also grounded in the contributions of those who understand law enforcement and are committed to educating the new generation of men and women that will keep this community safe. Let's acknowledge your faculty. These officers have given back to their profession by teaching and mentoring our students through their educational experience. Let's acknowledge the director of your academy, Mr. Mike Shimitero, and Chief Lopez the director of the Public Safety Institute, for their outstanding leadership and support of the academy, for working countless hours to create a safe environment for you and our students during a global pandemic so that you can achieve your goals. Thank you, faculty. I'll let you sit now. You're good. Take a seat. What a year it has been. While the pandemic has appended lives for nearly everyone, law enforcement officers, healthcare workers, firefighters, and all first responders have faced more risks than others. First responders had to make difficult choices during this year that has really tested their commitment to their profession. Choices that were personal, choices that meant isolation from their own children and parents, while at the workplace they selflessly dedicated themselves to serving others, while fully understanding the implications this had on their own health. As others were told, tighten up your mask, sit six feet apart from another human being, and wash your hands, you were taught how to use personal protective equipment properly and be ready to rush in where people need you the most. Today, we have arrived in that moment in time that marks your readiness to serve. <clears throat> you made it. You have just completed the Police Academy, a training program that exceeds the state, state of Michigan's mandated training curricula to enforce the general criminal law of the state of Michigan. You have graduated from a program that produces superior police officers. Through this program, you have made sacrifices. You probably have not slept much, or your family and friends don't know who you are anymore. Think of the time that you, don't have, be, you, you have been strengthened by experiences of others. On your journey in education, by one of your peers or one of your instructors. If you had not gone on this journey, you would have not arrived in this moment in time. 
Your role as police officer is a vital role in this community. Police officers are responsible for maintaining law and order, collecting evidence, information, while conducting investigations and surveillances. In addition to dealing with issues of politics, ethics, and increasingly complex law, law enforcement officers must be knowledgeable in the current technological advances that play a major role in police science today. This is where your education from Macomb Community College will be vital in your success as an officer. I challenge you to be excellent in whatever you do. Always give your best, work hard, demonstrate integrity in all that you do. As you graduate, commit yourselves to your career, become members of your professional organization, be lifelong learners. Whether that means going on for another degree or continuing your education in your own career, keep learning. Be proud of being a police officer. The Police Academy at Macomb Community College has provided a solid base from which you can soar to great heights. Life is full of many challenges, and the world we live in is far from being perfect. But I have the utmost faith in you, class of 110. I believe that you will make this community a better and a safer place, and that you will be shining examples of professionalism. In closing, I do want to leave the graduates with this quote from Mark Twain. 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the ones you did do. So throw off bowlines, sail away from the safe harbor, catch the trady winds in sore sail, explore, dream, and discover. Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. You now have the educational weapons from the Police Academy at Macomb Community College to do just that. Discover, connect, and advance. Congratulations, graduates. Thank you, Dean. Please welcome our keynote speaker, Chief Ryan Monroe of the Roseville Police Department. Good morning, everyone. I'd uh, like to thank the director for asking me for this, to participate today. Um, so when he called me, I was actually preparing, when he called me and asked me to do this, I was literally sitting at my desk preparing for an exit interview. And he asked me to give you some words of inspiration to talk about law enforcement. Um, in, in our profession, certainly over the last year or two, we've been in the mic under the microscope, people are questioning, why would anyone want to be a police officer with, with everything that's going on? Um, I'm certainly that is a question that you guys have heard during interviews or from your friends and family. Why would anybody want to be a police officer? I can stand here today and tell you uh, without any doubt in my mind or in my heart, it's the same reason 20 some years ago when I became a police officer for me, uh, law enforcement's a calling. This is, this is not something you choose to do. This is something you should, at least in your heart, want to do and know you or have to do. So I'd like you to take a second and think to yourselves and hopefully in the future and when life gets a little hard and the job gets a little hard, you can remember, why am I choosing, why am I doing this, why do I want to be a police officer? For me, it was, there was never a doubt in my mind. Um, I was very fortunate and very blessed to go to Bethlehem Lutheran School and Church, which is 150 feet from the back of the police station at Roseville. I spent many, many hours looking at Plymouth Furies and Dodge Diplomats and Caprice Classics driving through a parking lot when I should have been paying attention in class. Being a police officer is something I've always known I needed to do. So what is being a police officer to you? You need to figure that out. You need to know in your heart what you want to do. For me, being a police officer is simple. In my heart, I care about this country. I care about this community. Roseville's home to me. 
Uh, my family can go back generations to a farm in Roseville. We were one of the original families that settled in that area. I have family buried in that city. My grandfather took a second mortgage out on his farm to help build the second church that uh, Bethlehem Lutheran had. Being a police officer is not just about taking bad people to jail. It's about community. It's about caring about what you do. It's about being a peace officer and not just a crime fighter. You have to make those decisions now because you have to be true to those convictions moving forward because I've got news for you. You guys have been through a lot and you should be applauded and rewarded for that. You, the academy is very, very challenging and I'm sure some of you could have went in other directions in your life and make a lot more money, be a lot more successful, but law enforcement's a calling. You have to remember that because down the road, you're gonna be challenged. So as you move forward in your career, stay true to your convictions. Why are you getting into this line of work? I want you to picture yourselves now as a statue. You are a rough outline of what a police officer should look like. You have two choices in your career, and I'm sure the other chiefs and sheriff here will agree with me. You have two choices in your career. You can be a professional, which is what our society is demanding of us now that we be more professional. We hold ourselves to higher standards. You take the chisel and you make yourself into uh, a Greek God version of what a police officer is, or you let the, the challenges and the day-to-day -day, uh, negative parts of our job wear you down. You're either gonna be a refined piece of granite at the end of your career, or you're just gonna be an unshapely piece of rock. Um, I challenge all of you today to reflect upon these things in your career. You have to keep working. Being a, being a law enforcement professional is exactly that. You guys have succeeded. You've passed the graduation in your academy, but it doesn't stop here. You're going to go to an FTO program, and we're going to keep chiseling away at, at, at that piece of stone to make you a better law enforcement officer. But after that, it's on your own. Uh, everyone is consumed with what is coming down through legislation, the George Floyd Act. Um, you know, they can legislate anything we want. We as a profession have always heeded the calls. We have always heeded those challenges and we will push our profession forward, but it's your generation moving forward that's going to take us to the next step. Officers like me and other chiefs in this room will provide you the guidance and tools to do that, but it's the dedication you guys have shown over this academy class has to continue. Whether it's academics, physical fitness, going back to school, getting a degree. It's trusted upon you guys to pick up the torch that we, we have gotten to this point and take us to the next level. Now, I don't want you to feel that there won't be good times ahead of you, too. I, I have 70 officers that, that work for me. It should be 78, but we're still hiring. Um, 70 men and women that I, I put my life on the line for every day. We don't always agree. We're a family. Families fight. They don't agree with some of the things I do, and they don't, I don't agree with some of the things they do. But you're part of a brotherhood, a sisterhood, a family moving forward. Embrace it and love it and cherish every minute of it, because i got news for you. It goes by in a heartbeat. Someday one of you is going to be up here in the later part of your career giving, giving a speech knowing that the, the time limit's on, on, uh, on, on coming on for you. You've only got a couple years left, and it's over. So embrace it, enjoy it, and please, by all means, work at your craft, work at your profession, enjoy it, savor it, give back to your communities, and, and more importantly, don't ever lose fact of the people that are here today that have supported you and loved you through all of this. None of you would be here today if it wasn't for your friends and family. They are important. Do not, do not cut them out of your lives. Being a police officer has a culture. It, it does suck you in that it, it's all encompassing sometimes. But these are the people that got you this far and these are the people that will continue to get you through to the end. Don't ever, ever lose sight of that. Family first and foremost and then your department. So having said that, congratulations. I wish you all the very, very best, a very long, healthy, and happy career. And please don't ever get discouraged. Uh, Sir Robert Peel said it best. The, the, the police are the people, and the people are the police. We give the communities we serve the, the, law, the police departments that they ask for. If they want us to go in a certain direction, that's the direction we're going to go. But it's at the local level, not the federal level. Let, let the federal level play itself out. You stay true to the communities you represent because those are the people that deserve and pay your salaries for, to use a cliche you're going to hear throughout your career. They do. Represent them with love in your heart and respect for them and uh, pride in the communities you serve. 
So once again, congratulations. I wish you all the very, very best. Thank you, Chief. Can we have the cadets who are receiving the Police Academy Awards please proceed to the stage left? At this time, I'd like to invite Cadet Lejean to the podium. She will recite the Law Enforcement Code of Ethics. As a law enforcement officer, my fundamental duty is to serve the community, to safeguard lives and property, to protect the innocent against deception, the weak against oppression or intimidation, and the peaceful against violence or disorder, and to respect the constitutional rights of all to liberty, equality, and justice. I will keep my private life unsullied as an example to all, and will behave in a manner that does not bring discredit to me or my agency. I will maintain courageous calm in the face of danger, scorn, or ridicule, develop self-restraint, and be constantly mindful of the welfare of others. Honest in thought and deed, both in my personal and official life, I will be exemplary in obeying the law and regulations of my department. Whatever I see or hear of confidential nature or that is confided to me in my official capacity will be kept ever secret unless revelation is necessary in the performance of my duty. I will never act officiously or permit personal feelings, prejudice, political beliefs, aspirations, animosities, or friendships to influence my decisions. With no compromise or crime, and with relentless prosecution of criminals, I will enforce the law courteously and appropriately without fear or favor, malice or ill will, never employing unnecessary force or violence, and never accepting gratuities. I recognize the badge in my office as a symbol of public faith, and I accept it as a public trust to be held so long as I am true to the ethics of police service. I will never engage in acts of corruption or bribery, nor will I condone such acts by other police officers. I will cooperate with all legally authorized agencies and their representatives in the pursuit of justice. I know that I alone am responsible for my own standard of professional performance. I will take every reasonable opportunity to enhance and improve my level of knowledge and competence. I will constantly strive to achieve these objectives and ideals, dedicating myself before God to my chosen profession, law enforcement. Thank you. All of our cadets memorized that. More importantly, all of our cadets were taught to internalize that. That's the standard when they're out on the street and serving you and our communities. Next, I'd like to present our Macomb Police Academy's Achievement Awards. The first award is for academic excellence. This award is presented to the cadet who achieved the highest academic score in the academy. There are 19 examinations throughout the academy, and this does not include our hands-on skills testing. Our top three academic standouts were Macomb County Sheriff's Office Deputy Ariel Simpson, Macomb County Sheriff's Office Deputy Scott Marchetti, and pre-service cadet Cameron Nyhoff. Class 110's Academic Excellence Award goes to pre-service cadet Cameron Nyhoff with an academic average of 92.92%. Congratulations. <laughs> Our next award is the Top Gun Award. This award is presented to the cadet who distinguishes it himself or herself through the highest score in the firearms qualification course. Throughout the academy, as, would sta as is stated, our cadets receive over 100 hours of firearms training. Class 110's Top Gun Award goes to Macomb County Sheriff's Office, Deputy Alex 
Asia. Our next award is for Physical Excellence. This award is presented to the cadet who was selected by our physical training staff and fellow cadets. He or she has stood out among the cadets as a hard worker, displaying a drive to accomplish and overcome the physical challenges. Our cadets receive approximately 70 hours of physical training. They were here at 6.30 and it didn't end until about quarter to eight most days. And they must show an improvement by the end of the academy. Class 110's Physical Excellent Award goes to pre-service cadet Paul Nowakowski. Can I have those cadets who are receiving scholarships please move to the left of the stage. The next award is the Academy Director's Outstanding Leadership Award. I've requested this award in recognition of the outstanding leadership provided by our platoon leader, pre-service cadet Christian Ditching. This award recognizes Cadet Ditching's outstanding leadership and dedication to the police academy. He was the go-between when the academy needed something. I'd get his text messages or phone calls or during class, he would take on the responsibility to clarify uh, what, what needed to be done. It wasn't always easy. He took the heat a couple of times for things that I'm sure weren't his fault, but as a leader, he took that responsibility. Thank you, sir. Next is the M. Cole's Outstanding Performance Award, and I'm going to ask M. Cole's representative, Darnell Blackburn, to step up to the podium. <laughs> Does, I, I, oh, there we go. It's on now. Okay, so first and foremost, um, it's only three people in here, but three people can make a lot of noise. Let's really, really congratulate the graduates, family. The few that are here are here because you want to celebrate them. So here's your opportunity. One, two, three, let's celebrate the graduates that are here. That's better, that's better. It's bad enough we can't see each other's faces. At least we can make some noise. I mean, it's like, boom, boy, <laughs> you did good even with the muffled mask. Uh, my, my responsibility for being here is, is to recognize uh, the, the person who is selected uh, as the representation or outstanding performer for the Academy overall. MCOS is the governing body. We are the ones who certify and license all the police academies and police agencies here in the state of Michigan. So this person exemplifies the, the high ideals of what a, a recruit should look like, be like, feel like. And I, also I'm here another part, I, I also have had the pleasure of, of teaching. I'm an adjunct uh, in instructor here at Macomb Community College, which is a, a huge honor. So I'd like to say and congratulate the person that was going to receive this award. They don't know. Um, I told said I'm a teacher here and uh, it, it, it's not one of my students. I just wanted to make them think it was. So. <laughs> You thought it was you, didn't you, Ladita? It's not. But it's okay. I still, I still appreciate you so much, Lauren, Ladita, and Ray. At any rate, um, I do want to want to really acknowledge this person. And, and at this time, I'd like to uh, call to the stage recruit Cameron Neoff, who was receiving the MCO's Outstanding Performance Award. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Next, we'll present our scholarship award winners. If I could ask Cadet Lejean to step out, please. I'll read the awards in a description. Uh, the Michigan Thomas First Responders Scholarship, sponsored by Michigan Schools and Government Credit Union, P. 
People helping people is a philosophy that Michigan Schools and Government Credit Union embraces. As a community credit union, MSGCU believes strongly in support of first responders in our communities. The scholarship will provide financial assistance to Macomb Community College cadets enrolled in the police and fire academies at the college. This year's recipient, Crystal Lejean. The next scholarship is from the Warren Crime Commission Scholarship Fund. This scholarship provides assistance to a Warren resident who is attending the Macomb Police Academy. The recipient must have a minimum 3.0 GPA and demonstrated history of volunteerism. This year's recipient, Cadet Crystal Lejean. Thank you. Ms. Robinson? The Police Officers Labor Council Richard R. Weiler Police Academy Scholarship. The Police Officers Labor, Labor Council provides financial assistance to pre-service Macomb Police Academy cadets based on the highest overall achievement of a non-sponsored applicant. This year's recipient is Cadet Mia Robinson. The Clinton Township Police Department Honor Guard Scholarship was established by the Clinton Township Police Department Honor Guard to assist law enforcement students in accomplishing their educational goals at Macomb Community College. Preference was given to applicants with military experience and a required letter of recommendation from a professional in law enforcement. This year's recipient, Cadet Mia Robinson. The Dr. John and Jill DeGudis Endowed Memorial Fire and Police Scholarship. The scholarship was established by Mr. and Mrs. David DeGudis in loving memory of Dr. John and Jill DeGudis. David is a graduate of the Macomb Police Academy. Dr. John and Jill DeGudis' memories will be eternal with this endowed scholarship at Macomb Community College, which is used to assist police and fire academy students win <clears throat> with accomplishing their professional goals. This year's recipient is Cadet Mia Robinson. We're coming up on changing of the guard. Those of you in the audience that will be participating in this event with your cadet, if you could make your way stage left and into the lobby, or if you're on this side, out into the lobby, and there will be somebody out there who will guide you and assist you with meeting your cadet backstage. So we want to make sure this is coordinated well. So if you're going to be involved in the changing of the guard, if you could proceed out into the lobby, uh, we'll be preparing that soon. Next is the Lloyd Michael Todd Endowed Scholarship. Established by the family and friends of Lloyd Michael Todd to honor his achievements in the field of law enforcement and to provide scholarship assistance to students enrolled in the McCombs Law Enforcement Program. This year's recipient, Cadet Mia Robinson. And finally, the Joseph A. Blanke Memorial Scholarship Fund. The scholarship honors the memory of Joseph A. Blanke, an alumnus of the Criminal Justice Program of Macomb Community College. This scholarship provides financial assistance to cadets in the Macomb Police Academy, and this year's recipient, Cadet Mia Robinson. Thank you, ma'am. Cadet Nyhoff. Our final scholarship is the Officer Robert L. Brown Memorial Award for Academic Excellence. This award is given to the pre-service cadet with the highest academic ranking in the class, and this year's recipient, Cadet Cameron Nyhoff. Once again, congratulations to all of our award winners. Next is our changing of the guard. The Macomb Police Academy has a tradition called changing of the guard. And this tradition allows the cadets to acknowledge 
the influence a person has on their decision to become a law enforcement professional and to formally thank them. It is a symbolic transfer of leadership and responsibility that reflects on our commitment to faithfully discharge our duties for generations to come. Our first request has come from Cadet Lauren Anderson. Cadet Anderson would like to thank her father, retired officer Keith Anderson of the Gross Point Park Department of Public Safety and her grandfather, Larry Anderson, retired from Detroit Police Department. Cadet Anderson's father and grandfather are exceptional human beings with hearts of gold and unwavering patience and understanding with profound morality. They have brought dignity to the law enforcement community and Cadet Anderson hopes to mimic this journey in the badge that she is prepared to don. Thank you. Our next request has come from Cadet Michael Devlaminick. Cadet Devlaminick would like to thank his father, Deputy Mike Devlaminick with the St. Clair County Sheriff's Office Marine Division. Cadet Devlaminick's father has been a source of encouragement and an outstanding example for him to follow. Our next request has come from pre-service cadet, I'm sorry, Officer Andrew Endlich. Officer Endlich would like to thank his uncle, retired Sergeant Chris Powell of the Gross Point Park Department of Public Safety. Officer Endlich's childhood dream was to become a police officer, which was due largely to his uncle. Sergeant Powell has supported and inspired him to become a police officer, and he looks forward to following in his footsteps. Our next request has come from Officer Max Kretschmar of the Sterling Heights Police Department. Officer Kretschmar would like to thank his mother, 27-year veteran Lieutenant Samantha Kretschmar of the Oak Park Public Safety Department, and his father, retired Lieutenant John Kretschmar of the Gross Point Park Department of Public Safety, who served 27 years. Their impressive careers greatly influenced Officer Kretschmar's decision to join the law enforcement community. Our next request has come from Deputy Scott Marchetti of the Macomb County Sheriff's Office. Deputy Marchetti would like to thank his father, Gary Marchetti, and has asked that he pin his badge on. Detective Sergeant Marchetti worked for 28 years in law enforcement, retiring in 2010 as a detective sergeant from Dearborn Police Department. His father is also a bagpiper in the Metro Detroit Police and Fire Pipes and Drum Band. His, father with, his father's work ethic and dedication to service to the community has been a major influence on Deputy Marchetti and to follow in the footsteps of becoming a police officer. Our next request has come from Officer Lindita Merditai of the Macomb Community College Police Department. She would like to thank Officer Glenn Brimer for his inspiration for her to become a police officer. Officer Brimer will be pinning on Officer Merditai's badge. He has been her role model for the past four years and she truly hopes one day to be as great as an officer as he. And finally, our, request, our next request is from Officer Timothy Vadness 
of the Wayne State University Police Department. Officer Vadness would like to thank his father, Officer Joseph Vadness of the Wayne State University Police Department. Officer Vadness will strive to make his father proud as a second generation Wayne State University police officer. And now the moment you have worked so hard for, 124 days, you thought it wouldn't end, but we're going to get you out of here in a moment. As Mr. Blackburn had said, don't hold anything back. Feel free to cheer loudly. We have uh, our row one, head up into the wing there and we'll get started. Deputy Alex Asia of the Macomb County Sheriff's Office. <laughs> Pre-service cadet Lauren Anderson. Deputy Amanda Backers of the Macomb County Sheriff's Office. <laughs> Officer Trent Dara of the Wayne State University Police Department. Pre-service cadet, Michael Devlaminick. Pre-service cadet, Eilish Devota, who is in the hiring process for the Sterling Heights Police Department. Pre-service cadet, Christian Ditching, who is in the hiring process for Troy Police Department. Pre-service cadet, Brendan Ecker. Pre-service cadet, Raymond Eichbauer. <laughs> Officer Andrew Endlich of the Chesterfield Township Police Department. <laughs> Pre-service cadet, Jamara Julie. Officer Max Kretschmar of the Sterling Heights Police Department. <laughs> Officer Jonathan Krezak of the Warren Police Department. Pre-service cadet Crystal Lejean, who is in the hiring process for the Madison Heights Police Department. <laughs> Deputy Scott Marchetti of the Macomb County Sheriff's Office.
Officer Lindita Merditai of Macomb Community College Police Department. <laughs> Officer Joseph Milobar of the Ferndale Police Department. Pre-service Cadet Paul Nowakowski. Pre-service Cadet Cameron Nyhoff, who is in the hiring process for the Hazel Park Police Department. Officer Joseph Patron of the Royal Oak Police Department. Pre-service cadet Mia Robinson. Deputy Ariel Simpson of the Macomb County Sheriff's Office. Pre-service Cadet Raymond Sklut, who is in the hiring process for Roseville Police Department. Officer Timothy Vadness of the Wayne State University Police Department. Pre-service cadet Nicholas Van Sickle. And Deputy Jeremy Warner of the Macomb County Sheriff's Office. <laughs> One more time. Once again, congratulations, cadets and in some cases the off our officers. You did it. You've now graduated from the Cone Police Academy and you and all those that are here and those that couldn't be here should be extremely proud of you. Nice job. You are well prepared to pursue this career in law enforcement. And as Chief Monroe has indicated, we talked a lot about community, we talked a lot about service. We talked about the noblest of professions that that's what law enforcement is because we engage in the highest moral principles and ideals as was always emphasized in the academy. This is what's expected from our communities. This is what's expected from our departments. I want you to know that I'm personally thankful that you're graduating. As I've said to you before, my wife and I have prayed for you every morning and every night since the academy began and we're glad you made this choice. I look forward to seeing you back at the police academy. I look forward to hearing your stories, and I look forward to being invited to your swearing ceremonies. I'd like to thank the law enforcement agencies sponsoring our cadets in the police academy and those that have hired our cadets. Sheriff Wickersham of the Macomb County Sheriff's Office, Commissioner William Dwyer in the Warren Police Department, Chief Dale Dwajakowski in the Sterling Heights Police Department, Chief Bradley Kirsten in the Chesterfield Township Police Department, Chief James Matheny in the Macomb Community College Police Department, Chief Dennis Emmy in the Ferndale Police Department, Chief Anthony Holt in the Wayne State University Police Department, and Chief Corrigan O'Donohue of the Royal Oak Police Department. We'd like to thank those agencies who are in the process of hiring our cadets. Madison Heights Police Department, Hazel Park Police Department, Troy Police Department, and Roseville Police Department. As always, I want to give a heartfelt thanks to our staff it is truly a team effort.
to make this academy move forward. Under normal circumstances, it's challenging. Add masks, add social distancing, it, it, just, it just makes it that much more difficult. I want to thank our Police Academy ad, uh, Advisory Committee. Uh, their support helps make the academy outstanding. It's the chiefs, the directors, the sheriff, who allow their active law enforcement, their employees, to teach at the Police Academy. And it's never been about the money, because that's not the case. But it's because these executives allow their, their officers, their deputies to teach is what makes our academy great. And I want to thank them. Their staff brings instruction to life in our classrooms. And finally, let me thank Macomb Community College administration. You might not know it, but everything's closed down. Our cadets are used to being around each other and around people. At East Campus, we are full on training. We've been running police academies since June 2020, and it's, it's been nonstop. Same with fire academies, same with police and fire training. It's almost business as usual there, but the rest of the campus is closed down. And it's the support of the administration that has allowed us to do this, and we appreciate that very much. Let me end this by once again saying congratulations and thank you. Before we dismiss, I would like to let the audience know that what's going to occur is that the cadets will be dismissed. They'll be dismissed stage left and walk out the lobby and outside. You, the audience, will be dismissed from the back by one of the performing arts staff members. We want you to march out into the lobby and out of the building to keep everybody safe. Does anyone have anything else for me? Okay, cadet ditching. Please dismiss the class one last time.